Q and A. Price movement. Shanghai Composite gained 5.6% in May. Actually, it's the most since December. It's mainly driven by the medium and small cap rally. For those blue tips, no significant changes happen. So we look at the chart. If uh, it's a monthly chart, the right candle is what happened in May. 5.6% increase last month. Price earning ratio and the PB ratio at this moment. Currently, the price earning ratio is around 12 and the PB ratio is around 1.5. It's in the value. It's a reasonable price. Let's look at the liquidity in the China financial system, M2. What does M2 mean? M2 means how fast government is printing paper money. We look at what happened in the past 17 years. China government kept printing and printing paper money. The latest M2 number year over year is 16%. Definitely, there is enough liquidity in the China, China financial system compared with what we saw about the P ratio and the PB ratio. The stock price is still low. However, cash out of the financial market, out of the stock market, is still enough. Fundamental factors. PMI. Everybody talks about PMI in this market. We have two PMI purchasing managers index for China market. One is the official China Federation of Logistics and Purchasing. This official PMI rise to 50.8 from 50.6 in April. Unfortunately, HSBC's final PMI fell to 49.2 in May from 50.4 in April. We got conflicting PMI data. Confuse. We know 50 is a very important line for PMI. The fact is, HSBC PMI is more heavily weighted toward small and medium-sized enterprises. So from this PMI data, we get to know the difference between big size company and small size company.
Okay, we look at the right side. Look at the chart. Confusing. Official PMI up. HSBC PMI down. Export. We know the China growth story is supported by the export. However, the export to Western countries is not so good from January to April. Export to U.S. up 5% from a year ago. However, the export to European Union down 0.9%. We know the general economic growth rate in China is over 7%. So actually export cannot support China again. However, if we go through what happened during the past 22 years for the export, we look at the chart. The latest data is 14.7%. It's here. The red spot. If you look at the chart, we know actually export is still very important for Chinese economy. Consumption. China government wants to tra wants to change their business model. They want to change the export driven economy to consumption driven economy. As human, we always pursue what we don't have. China growth story is successful because of export and investment. Now they want to change to the consumption side. Let's look at what's happening in the market. Right side chart. We look at the right line, the red line. Urban per capita disposable income. first quarter this year is down fell from 9.6% to 6.7% let's see the green line retail sales still down Let's go through the past 18 year data for retail sales. It's very obvious. Even the new Xi Jinping government is talking about consumption, talking about change their business model. However, we look at the retail sales recent years. Down. Continue down. That's why I see we always pursue what we don't have, but maybe it's not the fact. Why? Why the retail sales is down? Why the consumption driven model is not working well? Because of poverty. According to the China Health 
and retirement longitudinal study. Of those aged 60 and over, 22.9% is around 42.4 million people are below the poverty line. The fear of poverty in old age drives China's higher saving rate. Chinese household squirrel away around a third of their income compared with about 2.5% in the U.S. This tipping China's economy off balance with too much wasteful investment and not enough household consumption. Take health insurance. Rural residents are fortunately enough to be hospitalized face out of pocket costs equal to almost 40% of their annual expenditure, according to the survey. Worse still, despite the high swing rate, the average wealth of the next cohort of Chinese retirees is low. For those aged 45 and over, median wealth per capita is around 4,000 US dollars equal to about five and a half years of expenditure. We saw more and more rich China Chinese people. We see more and more stronger China. But why? The data we got is not so nice. It's because that likely reflects massive income inequality. Massive income inequality. With the bulk of the saving done by China's rich, average households have little stored up. That means China's workers will have to continue saving to avoid poverty in retirement. How can we imagine we can get a very nice retail sales figure? Cannot. We look at the chart in the right. Composition of median wealth per capita for Chinese age 45 and older. If we combine housing and land, it's around 8-9%. So actually for normal China Chinese, they don't have enough money to consume. House is everything. Okay, let's look at the overall growth forecast for 2013. Official target set up by the China government is 7.5%. At the first quarter of this year is 7.7%. Last year it's 7.9%. In the May, a lot of institutions work out their forecast of China growth story. AMF and OECD cut forecast to 7.7% and 7.8% respectively. UBSAG cut to 7.7% from 8%. JP Morgan reduces to 7.6% from 7.8%. Yes, cutting, cutting, cutting. After the financial crisis, 
China economy is recovering. Unfortunately, it's slightly weaker than what we have expected. So from the fundamental side, everything is very obvious, recovering, but weak. So in the stock market, we always look for something new. We always look something look for something we don't know. We always look for something unexpected. Everybody knows the economy performance at this moment. Actually, at this moment, the China stock market want more policies from the government. They want the China government have more aggressive supporting policies for the economy. However, the new government leader by Xi Jinping, they are not very keen to focus on the GDP number. They focus on the quality of the economy. So they are also not very keen to provide more aggressive policies. That's why we see the stock market is a little bit quiet recent month. Technical analysis. Remember what Warren Buffett said. Only buy something that you'd be perfectly happy to hold if the market shuts down for 10 years. 10 years ago, China market is around 2000. 10 years later, it's also around 20,000. At this moment, price earning ratio is around 12. PB ratio is around 1.5. What do you worry about if you hold those blue chips? You know, every morning when I sit in front of my laptop, the first question I must ask myself is whether the trend is there. The trend is there Look at Asia market. This is a weekly chart. 39 week SMA does provide a good indication of the direction prices, prices are trending. The rise on December 28 is signifying a continued upward movement. At this moment, the basis is still up before prices break below the critical 39 week SMA. Trend is there. Near term support level is at 10 week SMA and the next support level is at 39 week SMA. Trend is still there. July, uh, June 1, 
official manufacturing PMI. Prior is 56. Actual is 58. However, June 3, HSBC manufacturing PMI. Prior 50.4. Actual 49.2. Confusing. The government is scheduled to release reports on trade, inflation, and industry output this coming weekend. So let's see the chart. June 8, trade balance. June 8, export. Prior is 14.7%. Survey is around 7%. Another important data will be released on June 9, Consumer Price Index, CPI. X CPI is 2.4%. Forecast is around 2.5%. No big difference. Same day PPI. Prior negative 2.6%, survey next negative 2.5%. June 9, same day, industrial production VOY, 9.3%, no change. Retail sales, prior 12.8%, survey is around 12.9%. So we can see in the next few days, the government is scheduled to release so many important data. Yeah, we, we can monitor the data closely, but actually we know we cannot get something unexpected in the fundamental side. 23-year CPI. It smiled. The latest data is 2.4%. Okay, 